Page nine is where we're picking up tonight. Okay. Miss Suzanne found a, we're not exactly sure what it is. If somebody dropped it, it looks like it's either an earring or a toy or I don't I don't know. If you lost it, it's yours that's up here on the Lord's Supper table. <coughs> Let's, let's start off with our prayer time and give you a, a couple updates. We had a, have a lot going on with prayer needs right now in our church family. And so um, let me give you a couple updates uh, as, I, as I go through my list here. So um, Emily Elkins had her baby yesterday uh, at 10.57 a.m., uh, 21 inches long, 9 pounds, 4 ounces, and um, everything's happy and healthy. So William, William Hudson Elkins. So that's exciting. So uh, Keep them in our thoughts and prayers in this time of transition and, and you know, new life in their, in their family. Okay. Uh, Joel and Shelby, we can take y'all off of our list for now, I guess, and show good enough to come back. So we're, we're glad that you're feeling a little bit better and uh, able to get back. Um, Scott Thomas' family, he passed away this weekend. They had the funeral this afternoon. So just keep his family and Miss Alicia and her family uh, in your thoughts and prayers. Jordan McDuffie is still up at Chapel Hill. Uh, they feel like the pneumonia and the infection is clearing up in his lungs. And he's been on that, that uh, tube that's inserted in there all week long and it's very uncomfortable and very painful when he breathes. So, um, uh, but they do feel like it's making some progress, clearing things up a little bit. But they have, they knew something from before that they did some tests that reminded them that he's got in the bottom of his esophagus, like something that blocks things up. And so um, that causes him to, to aspirate. And that's what's causing some of this infection and pneumonia. And so now that they kind of got that on their, their radar, he's scheduled to have some more treatments to figure out how to deal with that. And so it's, it's moving forward, but slowly and very uncomfortably. So we want to definitely keep lifting him up. Uh, Abby Polston ended up being able to go home Sunday, and um, they feel like she'll be able to carry the baby to full term, which is a relief. They thought that her water had broken last week, and, and we're real nervous about that. Okay. So anybody else that you'd like for us to specifically lift up tonight? Oh, oh I forgot one. Um, the Bobby Ward, which is Miss Ann's sister, she, they moved her from Georgia to live with her son for a little bit, but it's, they, they knew it was a hospice situation, uh, but they feel like her organs have started shutting down and they're trying to get her to a hospice facility somewhere close by. So it's, it looks like it's coming soon and very soon for that transition. So we want to remember Bobby Ward and Ann and their family stuff. Jerry had his heart thing Tuesday, yesterday, I've never heard of it, but it's to a cardioversion, but I was told today that it's to try to slow your heart down, and it, when it's beating too fast, it's to try to slow it down, 
and to get it back in rhythm. But that went well for him yesterday. Um, any, anybody else would like for us to specifically lift up tonight? I didn't tonight. So Jennifer, one of Jennifer's good friends, her uh, 34, 32, 34-year-old son passed away this weekend. And um, just hard, 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 hard. And that, the Gaines, um, sorry? The Gaines family, uh, our area, there's a 53-year-old boy buried today, Trey. Then his uncle passed away, Eddie Gaines, and he'll be buried Sunday. From the same family? Yeah, honey. Yes. And then my sister-in-law's husband passed away today, Dottie Gaines Henson. Uh, she had remarried, and Jack Henson passed away today. He used to run Brownie Lou's in Sour City for a long time. Hanson or Henson? Henson. E. E. Hanson. I think he's also Alicia's cousin. Oh. Alicia's still pretty sick. She's in the doctor's place this week. Who? Alicia? Okay. All right. Reverend Marlowe? Just on him, Miss Robin. Ryan. Ryan Marlowe. He did not get to come home last. Elizabeth saw him in like he was supposed to. He developed an um, infection in his lung, a collapse in his bowel, no. and a kidney stone. But they've got all that under control, and he is scheduled and must have a chance today to come home tomorrow. See, well, good thing all that happened before he went home. And exactly. Good yeah, gracious. I don't know. He's there is back home from small court till tomorrow. I must have a chance to go tomorrow. All right. That's a miracle story. Just amazing already. All right. Let's pray together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember First Timothy and his family and like they lost him so we do and wreck him gold. Who's that now? I couldn't hear you. First Health EMS. First Health EMS. I'm not sure the name of the employee that the wreck. Heavenly Father, we thank you that when our hearts are heavy, that your grace is sufficient. And so our just so so much going on health-wise and, and people in our church family and people connected to our church and friends and family. And we, we just want to lift them all up to you that, that we've mentioned. We pray for the, the Gaines family and having lost young person and, and another family member all in the same week and funerals in the same week we just pray for comfort for them and um, also for uh, Dottie Gaines Henson that, that family and, and their time of loss as well and we pray for comfort and peace and provision support system for them we pray for the Carter family and their time of loss just that you would uh, give them comfort and peace and provision of all. Uh, the, the family and the, the, the work family of this First Health EMS employee that, that lost their life today. We just pray for that whole situation and for, for comfort and peace for, for them. Pray for Alicia, that, that she would get to feeling better soon and very soon. She's been uh, dealing with it for a good couple few weeks now to help her to feel better soon. Lord, we give you praise for this new birth for William Hudson and, and everybody being healthy and baby being healthy and just what, a, uh, what an exciting reminder of, of how you work and that, that you just give us, show us the miracle of life so often. And 
so we just pray for that new that family and their in this addition to their family just so much changes with that with time and, and responsibilities and, and needs so we pray that you would provide for all of their needs in, in this time of transition for them and lord we pray for bobby ward and we, we just once again want to pray that you would heal her but we also want to pray that if this is her time that you would make it a smooth transition into your kingdom and that she would have a clear understanding of the gospel and, and that her her heart her soul was right with you if not lord we pray that you would put somebody in her life some family member or somebody chaplain somebody in her life to help help her to, to put her trust in you fully and, and understanding what that means and we pray for Miss Christine Burke, just that you would continue to help her to feel better. Uh, we pray for Jordan uh, and, and Kathy and Daniel. We, we thank you that we're starting to see baby steps progress, and they're starting to see other things that could be causing some of this problem. And so we just pray that you would be with these doctors, all of these doctors, and give them wisdom and discernment and clarity and, and a, a solid game plan to help him to recover. And um, we just pray for you to provide for all of their needs uh, during this time that you would give them peace and comfort and, and healing and we thank you that abby was able to go home and things are, are looking better in that whole situation we, we give you praise for that uh, we continue to lift up ted and willa and they're um, dealing with covid and other illness in, in their family we just pray that you would bring healing to them and so lord we thank you you, you are so good uh, you are so faithful, and um, we just pray that as we meet together, we would just have a just a solid awareness of your presence here with us. You, you promise where two or more are gathered that you're here, and so we're um, just help us to have our eyes and, and ears and hearts and minds open to to sense your presence. And we pray that you would speak to us uh, through our study, through our our conversations with each other, through your word. Um, just through our time together, just speak to our hearts, help us to grow in our faith, help us to grow in our understanding of your word and of doctrine, help us to grow in our understanding and relationship with you. And so we give you thanks and praise even ahead of time for how you're going to touch our hearts tonight. And so um, we love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. All right, well, we're... We've already talked about a lot, a lot, a lot of lessons that we can get out of the uh, creation events. Uh, we're, we're starting to wrap up and get closer to the end. If not today, then uh, probably next week we'll wrap up the creation part and then move on to, uh, I believe it's the doctrine of salvation that we'll cover next. Uh, but so starting tonight, I think I said it was the page nine on your study sheets, but uh, the creation account reveals that God gave us both the example and the command to rest on the Sabbath day. Uh, we read in Genesis 2, 2 and 3. And so on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Uh, so for six days, God worked diligently, uh, but he did not work on the seventh day. He rested. Now, did God need to rest? No, he didn't need to rest. He's God. He has an endless source of energy and, and power, uh, but he did so to, for our good, to give us uh, an example of what we need. And so he set the seventh day apart as holy. Uh, as separate, as different, as pure, as a, as a time to focus on, on rest and focus on him. So God thought that a day of rest was so important that he made it one of the Ten Commandments. Uh, we read in Exodus 20, 8 through 11, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or 
maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. And so we, uh, we even see that played out in, in the wilderness uh, with God providing the, the manna uh, in the wilderness. They, they could collect it each day uh, of the week, just enough of what they needed, uh, the amount that he prescribed of what they needed. Uh, but on the day before the Sabbath, they were to collect two days worth so that they wouldn't have to do that on the Sabbath day. Uh, and if they, uh, if they did too much, uh, it would go bad. And so um, I, I don't know why I added that part. It wasn't really part of the point. But anyway, uh, now in the New Testament, uh, we see that the Pharisees and the religious leaders were really, really, really obsessed with trying to keep people from breaking this commandment. Uh, really obsessed. And that really drove them nuts that Jesus would heal people or minister to people on the Sabbath. And that was one of the uh, problems they had with him. Uh, and then Jesus told us that the, uh, the oh, how's that word? I didn't write it down here. It's basically that the, the Sabbath is for us. That it is for our good. Uh, and so um, the simple truth is that our bodies need rest. Amen. Like right now, <laughs> our bodies need rest, right? That's just the, the way it works. If you don't rest, you will break down. Uh, and I've been known to, to push it, push it, push it, push it uh, until my body breaks down and you get sick and, and uh, then you're forced to kind of rest for a little bit. But it's really more than just you know, resting, taking it easy. Really, true rest and refreshing comes from being in the Lord's presence. Uh, just as a battery charger recharges batteries to be useful again, spending time in the Lord's presence, worshiping Him and fellowshipping with Him and, 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 and being, reading His Word and praying and, and those kind of things, recharges us, phys, recharges us spiritually and emotionally and mentally uh, so that we can begin a new week of work and then rest again and focus on him. And so it's, it's not just taking it easy. Uh, true rest is focusing on God, using that day to focus on God and to connect with him. And that's where our true rest comes from. Okay, so next one. We we'll learn from the creation account that God completed his perfect creation. That might sound mighty simplistic, uh, but when the uh, primary, when the world's favorite, you know, idea of how it all got here is evolution, that it all evolved, then it's important for us to know that from the beginning, it was finished. It was finished. It was perfected. Now we read in Genesis two one and two, thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. God finished the job. He completed what he was trying to do. And we read in Hebrews 4.3, New Century Version, God's work was finished from the time he made the world. Now, this world and universe are not works in progress as claimed by evolution. Uh, though it's been marred by the presence and effects of sin, this universe is a finished work of creation. Now here's the difference. An unfinished work in progress is like a house with only the framework completed. A finished work that has been marred is like a Victorian mansion that has been neglected for years. One needs to be finished. The other needs to be restored. God completed his perfect creation, but because of sin, because of the effects of sin, not just on us, but on the world, uh, it now needs to be restored. 
And of course, if you read through the end of the picture that God has given us, it's actually going to be destroyed and recreated altogether. He's going to give us a new heaven and a new earth at some point in the future. And so, but this, what he's made was completed. There was no need for evolution. There's no, it makes no sense to have this thought of evolution because God finished the job and he said it was good. It's very good. Okay. Uh, we learn from the creation account that God now sustains all he made. Uh, never make the mistake of thinking that God made it all and then somehow just left it to run on its own. Uh, there are literally hundreds of Bible verses that speak of God's sustaining hand uh, in his work of creation. For instance, the Apostle Paul wrote in Colossians 1, 16 and 17, For by him, I'm talking about Jesus, for by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So from the smallest dewdrop to the greatest nations, God sustains it all. And so imagine yourself trying to put together a simple plastic world globe. Uh, you take the four pieces that come in the box and you fit them carefully together with your hands. As long as you keep your hands around that globe, it stays together. But the moment you let it go, it falls apart. The glue holding that plastic globe together is your hands. You're the glue. Uh, well, in the cosmic realm of things, God is the glue that holds all of the universe together. Uh, the children's song is theologically accurate. He's got the whole world in his hands. Uh, God is our sustainer. Um, these next couple, we kind of uh, fitted in earlier in the study in a different section and different focus, but uh, uh, I think a, a reminder is, is, is helpful here. So God created all that is for his own sake. In other words, God made this universe and everything in it, including you and me, for his own pleasure. And we read in Revelation 4.11, You, God, created everything, and it is for your pleasure that they exist and that they were created. So everything you see, God made it for his own enjoyment. Uh, if you've ever felt the, the joy of making something, whether it was uh, some kind of craft that you did or something that uh, a garden you put together or woodwork or something like that, if you've ever felt the joy of making something, uh, you have a clue of what it means uh, for God to create for his own sake. It, it, your work, your masterpiece brings you pleasure, brings you joy. And the same is true for God with this world that he has created. You're not here by accident. God put you on this planet because he wants to love you and he wants to enjoy a relationship with you and he wants you to love and enjoy him back. So all creation is for God's pleasure. And next, creation demonstrates God's sovereignty. Uh, sovereignty simply means that God is ultimately in charge. Uh, this wonderful creation shows the Lord's sovereignty in terms of ownership, rule, and leadership. So the psalmist declared in Psalm 89, 11, and in Psalm 22, 27, 28, the heavens are yours and yours also the earth. You founded the world and all that is in it. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him, for dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. The earth, the universe, is the Lord's. 
He owns everything you see. Uh, God is a gracious, patient, generous, and loving owner, but he is the owner. And as ruler of all creation, God's will and plans and purposes will be done. So wise King Solomon proclaimed in Proverbs 19, 21, Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. And God's leadership and reign have our best interests in mind. And God promised in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God rules all of creation with love, mercy, righteousness, and justice. Creation reveals that God is sovereign. I saw, a, 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 for me, it was a funny clip, but it probably wasn't really all that funny uh, but this morning I, I saw a clip and it was like on a soccer field and you see kind of the the goal is up at the top and the goalie is right there in front of the goal then you see the, uh, somebody on the other team running as fast as they can with the ball down the court down the field and she kicks it as hard as she can trying to make the goal uh, but it it the, the goalie blocks it, but then the way it's blocked and the momentum of how they were running and, and as close as they were together, after the goalie blocked it, the ball came back and hit the girl in the face, the girl who kicked it and was trying to score, kicked it and it hit her in the face, and then ricocheted off and went into the goal for the score. <laughs> and I, I don't know what, why I thought of this, but this is what I thought of. I sent this text to Jennifer with this video. Isn't that how God's sovereignty feels sometimes? <laughs> you, you work your, 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 your shorts off trying to give it your best and do your best to, to reach the goal uh, and you give it your best and then the devil or somebody else or circumstances <laughs> block all of your efforts and then you get punched in the face or you feel like you get punched in the gut and then God's will is done anyway. <laughs> Isn't that how God's will feels sometimes? Like, like we get in our own way, but yet God's will gets done. Uh, he is sovereign. His will will be done. And one day, whether people like it or not, whether people want it or not, everybody will acknowledge that he is king of kings and lord of lords. Uh, and so he is, this, this creation reflects that God is sovereign. Let me, if you'll, I think I can, I'll, about five more minutes, I think I can get to where I want to get, and then that'll set us up to finish off next week. So, um, next, God, or creation, reflects God's character. Uh, we read in Psalm 19, 1 and 2, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. So this universe uh, practically shouts, God is great. God is great. Uh, when we uh, look at this universe around us, we can see that God is great. Uh, the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 1, verse 20, New Living Translation, From the time the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky and all that God made. They can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, so they have no excuse whatsoever for not knowing God. Um, a person's handiwork reveals his or her character. The same is true for God. This wonderful universe shows us God's character. It reveals how great our God truly is. And then the last one we'll talk about tonight, and then um, 
So this wonderful creation shows God's great wisdom and power, which is kind of technically still part of his character from the one before, but a little more specific. Uh, it shows his omniscience, uh, how he knows everything. He has all knowledge and wisdom, uh, and he has omnipotence. He is all-powerful. Um, God is all-knowing, and God is all-powerful. From absolutely nothing, God designed and created all that is. Uh, the psalmist declared in Psalm 104, 24, New Century Version, and then Psalm 147, 5, Lord, you have made many things. With your wisdom, you made them all. The earth is full of your riches. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Now Solomon proclaimed in Proverbs 3.19. By wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundations. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. Now, the vastness of the universe, that was God's idea. The billions of stars in the sky, that shows God's power. The distance of the earth from the sun and the way the earth spins, rotates, and revolves, that's God's wisdom in motion. Filling the earth with oxygen, that was God's understanding. Forming the mountains and the oceans, that shows God's power. And the intricate design of the human body, that shows God's great wisdom. Just look around you. And you will see the unmatchable wisdom and knowledge and power of the God who created it all. And so that was uh, sort of the conclusion of, of our lessons from creation. Um, next week I'm going to go through the list of just kind of stating them. And that will, you'll find that, that, that we have looked at 56 lessons from creation. So next week I'm going to uh, just read through that summary list and then also we'll do a comparison uh, of the Christian doctrine or understanding or perspective of origins versus some other religions uh, perspective on that and beliefs about that. So that's, uh, we'll wrap that up next week and then I believe the following week we, we won't do a Bible study, we'll do our, our shoebox packing party. Uh, over at the activity building, um, uh, most most of us, most of our folks have brought the boxes back, but we have about I don't know, 15 or so over here that we still need to put together. So we'll have a packing party. We do still need some supplies to put in them, though. Uh, if you want to bring something else, uh, you can find one of that one of those lists. I think most of them are either. Pre-K boys or seventh grade boys that, that are left over there. So if, if you want to find something on that list, and if you don't, if you lost your list, there's some more in the foyers. Uh, but we're, we're going to start at 6:30 that evening with a spaghetti supper. So we'll eat together and then pack boxes at seven, and probably should be finished up by by our normal time. I would think eight by the latest. I would think. So uh, that's kind of where we're going. And then after that, we'll start looking at, I don't know, we're going to be getting close to Easter, so I'm not sure if I'll start salvation yet or if I'll do something more leading up to Easter. I haven't decided yet, but we'll, that's kind of the rough plan. So any, any words of wisdom or, or anything you'd like to share that, that stuck out <coughs> to you tonight or that made you think about it tonight as we were talking uh, before we go? Anybody, something you'd like to share? Oh, yeah? The choir, anyway, because we had prepared to do our music a cappella because Kathy wasn't going to be here. Yeah. And the Lord just sent this lady to play for us. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Pat was a sweetheart. All areas to take it up in peace. He provides, doesn't he? So, um, yeah, that was their first time visiting. And he just. So he, he was the pastor of the Hispanic church that meets at East Sanford Baptist in Sanford. 
uh, and retired the Sunday before. So this was his first Sunday not having to be in, his, in that position, in that job. And so he, um, I had seen him one day last week and had invited him, and so you're welcome anytime. Uh, but they have a friend who is a minister somewhere else that they were planning on going to see. Yeah, she found me they had planned to go somewhere else, but then decided. And it just it didn't work out, and they ended up here. And, Good Lord knew we need her. Yeah, it was, I got chill bumps and tears when she walked up and and helped helped fill out for us. So, Do you know that as a pastor, Papa, who said that they were going to be looking for church, he knew the only pastor that invited him? Well, it helped that I was sitting beside him, so I had a, probably had a better opportunity <laughs> than. <laughs> yeah. So I actually was in school with his wife for a little bit. I was on, for my master's degree. I was only back at Campbell's Divinity School for a year, but she was. We had some classes together there, but I haven't seen her since then, which was. 20 years ago almost so, small world small world but yeah, that was that was precious God God really touched my heart with all of that all right let's close with a prayer dear Heavenly Father help us to never take for granted your creation uh, and and the truths and the principles and the lessons that are right in front of our eyes if we're just paying attention. Um, just so much to learn about you and about ourselves uh, and the way that you made us and the way that you made this world that we live in and this universe. You are great. You are amazing. <clears throat> your, your power has no limitations. Your knowledge and wisdom has no limitations. You are amazing. And this, this universe, this world, our lives just really demonstrate that every day that, that you are awesome and so as we live our lives help us to help us to just pay attention to the world around us and help us to reflect on you and how great you are every single day and help us to always be grateful for uh, for how you've provided for us in in this world and how you sustain us in this world so be with us as we go lord i pray that you would keep us all safe until we can gather together again, I pray that you would uh, work in our lives in amazing ways, and that you would help us to, to grow in our faith every single day, that you, you would just help us to, uh, to dig deeper and deeper and deeper in our relationship with you every single day. Help us to, uh, to be good witnesses for you, just in the way we live our lives, but, but also intentionally uh, paying attention to the opportunities that you put before us to to share your love, to share the gospel, uh, to share, uh, to share you, to introduce people to you, Jesus. So work, work in our hearts in, in amazing ways, so that that we can um, bless the people around us. So we thank you, we love you. It's in Jesus' awesome name that we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks so much for coming tonight. I hope you have a great rest of the evening and a great rest of the week, and uh, we'll see you Sunday, if not before. Thank you, ma'am.